Okay, so what we've seen so far is that in the external ear, there's an increase in the amplitude of the sound that's coming in. And that we then lose amplitude in the middle ear, but not quite as much as we would otherwise. And then one of the beautiful things that we've learned a lot about, in, we learned a lot about in the 20th century, is that there is cochlear amplification in the, uh, in the inner ear. And this is an active process that is very interesting, very exciting, and also has some um, clinical uh, relevance, uh, as we'll see. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the cochlea. And I have to warn you before we go in, there are a lot of names, a lot, a lot of names. The concepts are relatively straightforward. There are a lot of names, anatomical names, that, that I'm going to say. Uh, knowing all of them, yeah, I'm not so sure that that's absolutely required, but I, but I have to share these with you. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> We've got our stapes that is, is banging here on the oval window. This is a fluid-filled uh, uh, spiral, and, and it's a spiral that comes up like this, uh, but I've, I've unwrapped it. I've unrolled the spiral. So I'm rolling it out from the base of the cochlea uh, all the way up to the apex. <clears throat> and what you see is that there's a fluid-filled chamber here next to the oval window called the scale of vestibuli. And then there's another window over here, a round window. And essentially, as information, as this window is compressed, this one is going to go the other direction. There's always going to be the same amount of fluid here. So if, as this goes in, that goes out. When this comes back out, this one goes in. This is called compression, and the and outward going is called rarefaction. So there's going to be a, a fluid, uh, <clears throat> a wave that comes through the the uh, length of the cochlea. This is a there is a connection between the scale of vestibular and the scale of tympani that's up at the very top of the bony cochlea. And this is called the helicotrema. It's right next to the apex. So there's a continuous, this is a continuous amount of fluid. The sensory organ in the fluid is not this part. It's contained with, here within the cochlear duct. And I have to say that for me, one of the confusing things about learning hearing is that this is also a spiral, but the base of the uh, cochlea, of the bony cochlea, has the apex, has the thinnest part of the cochlear duct. So it's in it, the, uh, the widest part is up here, and the narrowest part is down here. So what happens when it, uh, sound comes in, and remember that the sound is going to make the stapes go like this. It's going to make it go like this at various frequencies. Slow, a lot faster than that, or really fast, much faster than I could possibly do with my hand, obviously, because we go up to 20 kilohertz when we're born. And these, the, this information is going to be distributed to different parts of the cochlear duct. This is the tonotopy the mapping of different frequencies, tones, along the length of the cochlea. It was discovered by von Bicchese, who got the Nobel Prize for it. And what he discovered using cochlea from cadavers was that sound was distributed in a tonotopic um, method across the, the length of the cochlea. So that the highest frequency sounds are distributed to the base of the cochlea, and then the lowest frequency sounds are distributed to the, to the apex of the cochlea. And you can see this. The highest is going to be 10 kil 20 kilohertz in the, in the baby, and then going up down to or some, somewhere around under 100 hertz um, at the very apex. Now, Bacchese did discover this, but, but it is not uh, it's not the whole story, and that's that's what where the revolution that happened in the 20th century uh, comes in. So what we now understand is that there is uh, a cochlear amplifier that not only increases the deflection of the membranes of the cochlear duct, but also 
um, augments the resolution that you can detect between two different frequencies. So let me explain what I mean by that. According to Van Bekezi's, uh findings in the dead uh, cochlea, um, you, would you would be able to tell the difference between, say, one kilohertz and 100 hertz, or one kilohertz and five kilohertz. But in fact, we can tell the difference between 500 hertz and 502 hertz. And, and the tonotopy that uh, is present in a dead cochlea does not allow us to do that. So what we now know is that the cochlea not only amplifies, but it amplifies in a tonotopic fashion. So that incoming sa sound that comes in at 1,000 uh, hertz is going to be amplified right here, but only right here, whereas a th sound that uh, comes in at 1,005 hertz is going to be amplified uh, at a neighboring place and not also affect this 1,000 hertz. And that enables us to get a different signal when there's an incoming sound at 1,000 than at 1,005. Okay, so what we're going to do in the next uh, video is look in at that cochlear duct.